This is BBC One. And now we're showing the winner of this year's prestigious television award, the Pre Italia for Drama. Bob Peck stars in Simon Gray's black comedy, After Pilkington. You're late. I'm sure it's exactly five. Yes, I must have decided you were going to funk it. Why should I funk it? Because you're going to hate this guy. I thought you said he was your oldest friend. Oldest living friend. And you said he was a bit of a charmer. Oh, charmless. I said completely charmless. What's this? A rabbit. Yes, I can see it's a rabbit. But what's it eating? Pig's kidneys, they look like. Yes, pig's kidneys. One of my research students is trying to induce a primitive form of schizophrenia. Probably all she'll get in the end is a carnivorous rabbit. It's just another of our freaks. Still, she's a bright girl. By the way, I'll drive. No, you won't. Yes, I will. I know the way. Besides, I need the relaxation. You're not driving, Boris. I'm sure I've forgotten to do something important. You're absolutely not driving, Boris. More. Oh, really, James? And keep it there, please. I really don't know why you gave up your own car. Probably because driving other chaps is my version of making love to their wives. Only better, as they have to sit beside me while I do it. No, the truth is the sods took away my license. You bloody fool. Stop the car. Joke. James. Joke. You need to shake up your pattern, James. I mean, my dear fellow, just look at you. The least sound... Pull over. For God's sake, James, hi.
Hello, Jack. This is James Westgate, fellow of Hartford, delivered as asked. James, this is Derek Newhouse, newly elected fellow of Maudlin. But before we proceed any further, I must beg the use of your lavatory. Where is it located? In the house. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Ask Perry, she's in the kitchen. She'll show you. He looks as if he's going to throw up. Is he all right? Yes, I think so. We had a narrowish thing on the way. He's still a bit shaken, probably. What happened to his MG? He sold it. Thinks it's more exciting going about in a wheelchair, doesn't he? No, actually, that's mine. My wheelchair. Ha! <laughs> Wine? Lovely. Thank you. So, you're at Hartford, are you? What's your line? English. Thank you. Yours? Classics. Ah. And where were you before Magdalen? Oh, London, Queen Mary College, a dump down in the East End. You won't have heard of it. Oh, I've heard of it. Really? What context? My father used to be one of the governors. He had a great affection for the place. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry about that. My wife said the she, She's a bit cackhander. No, don't worry. It's only white wine. Won't stain. Although this lot tastes as if it should. I don't know where the hell she gets it from. Probably the post office down in the village. Come on, sit down there. That's safe. Uh, now then. Here you are. No, oh, 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 sorry. It'll dry out in a second or eat its way through your trousers. <laughs> it's uh, Perks at Hartford, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Your principal, Perks. Oh, Potsy, yes. Potsy. Is that what he's called? That's what I call him. What's he like? A bit of a prick, from what I can go. He's my uncle. <laughs> Sorry. Potsy is a family nickname after Beatrix Potter. He used to give me one of her tales every Christmas. It still does now and then, as a matter of fact. Well, as I say, I've never met him. In fact, I'd very much like to. That shouldn't be much of a problem. He's quite an accessible prick. Yes, well, you see, I have a slight problem over that. Really? Christ, I'll leave it until later. Yes, yes. Derek, it really is a charming little place. One expects gingerbread on the roof and the plants to be growing chocolate buttons and other goodies. Penny. Penny, have I complimented you on your looks, your health, your sparkling eyes, the bloom oh, on your cheek. Don't take your hands off her, Boris. It doesn't fool anyone. Penny, my dear, this is James Westgate of Hartford College. James, the ravishing Penelope, who has the misfortune to be Derek's wife. How did you do? You know who gave us this information? Pilkington. No, it wasn't, darling. Surely it was the, uh, the people who sold it. No, it was Pilkington. Was it? Mm. Oh. Well, would anyone like another sandwich? How come Pilkington? Strawberries? Oh, he was always mm -hmm. hanging around here looking for some Anglo-Saxon burial mound in the woods at the back. Drove us mad, popping in and out of the kitchen for cups of tea, prosing on about sights and measurements. God, what a bore. And we. Uh, had if everyone's finished, dinner. do you mind if I clear away? And as for his wife, what was her name? Daphne. Deirdre, darling. Deirdre. Actually, she's been very kind to me, showing me all the shops. Thank you. Anyway, what's your theory? About what? But we've vanished to, of course. Oh, it's perfectly obvious. It's just the usual midlife crisis, that's all. Oh, balls, Boris. You only had to spend ten minutes in Pilkington's company to know he wasn't going through any sort of crisis. He wouldn't know what a crisis was, would he, Pen? He loves everything about his life, from being a medieval historian to being short and bald with a wart on his nose. Probably even likes his lisp. And he not only dotes on his Daphne, he positively worships his two sons. He's also a children boy, isn't he, Pen? <laughs> Actually, they're daughters, darling. Yes, well, the point is, he adores them, whatever they are. James, you know him, don't you? Hmm? Pilkington, our vanishing Don. Yes. Well, only slightly. 
I gave a paper to that history society he runs and I went back afterwards to dinner. So, what's your explanation? I haven't got one. Penny, some woman's wisdom, please. What's happened to Pilkington? I really don't know. All I know is that Deirdre and the girls miss him dreadfully. I, I just hope it's nothing ghastly. Would anyone like some more coffee? There you are, Derek. As always, your wife's heart has gone straight to the heart of the matter. Let me yes, ask the question all right, we discussing. You know how people feel about what's happened, but what's happened? And I'll tell you what's happened. He's been murdered. Oh, nothing exotic, knowing Pilkington. Probably picked up a hitchhiker who bashed him over the head. Yes, I insist. No, or got himself right. done over by a gang of Hell's I Angels. Please, please, please stop. At me. It's Eventually, his rude. body will turn up crammed into the boot of his car in some wasteland somewhere. Or a squad of Boy Scouts will tread on him in a ditch. And now that that's settled, on your feet, Wog. It's time I gave you your thrashing. Bloody <laughs> hell, Boris, you smashed that straight at my face. A perfectly legitimate tactic, I believe. At the body, not the face. James, ruling, please. I can't remember a rule against it. <laughs> What's the score? Score, um, James, please. Three, one. Three, one? How can it be? Umpire's vert is final, Derek. You're going to have to do without me for a bit, I'm afraid. I'm going for a pee. Yes, we'll hurry back, lest you want to see blood on the lawn. Come on, then. Oh! Huh? Good. Still interested in the same things, but uh, a bit further along the track. That's really where I am, I hope. Another thing about the consolations of scholarship is that I actually laughed while listening to it. Why you? Oh, so delighted. This is being worried. Just going to concentrate. Yes, I think we'll have to concentrate. to to alarm you. You were following me? No, no, I wasn't. I, I was merely wandering in this direction. You were following me? Just as you were staring at me before. Why? But I assure you, I really... You're quite right, of course. I was following you. And I was staring at you. But why? Why were you? You've made me feel quite... quite horrid. As if you were, were after me in some way. Well, because... to renew our acquaintance, we've met before, you see. In Cornwall, in the village of Clogmelish, in the summer of 1961, it would have been, when I was ten and you were eight. You don't remember? <laughs> I've never forgotten. The first time I saw you, 
I was sitting in my room, wondering how on earth to get through another sunny day. And you appeared beneath my window. And I went straight out, rather as if I'd just been sitting there waiting for you to turn up. You made me do the most appalling things. When I let you down, some failure of nerve on my part or clumsiness upset one of your plans, you'd assault me, really rather violently. I've never come across such a temper. And once or twice, when you were feeling particularly tired, you made me, well, <laughs> put you to bed, undress you and tuck you up. You're the first lady I ever saw naked. And the last for quite a few years. <laughs> once, once when I was having a bath when they were out, actually you insisted on my having a bath. You said I smelt. You soaped me and dried me. Surely you remember that. Look, I really am not making this up. Your real name is Prudence, isn't it? Although they seem to call you Penny and Pen. Yeah, of course. Your second name is Penelope, right? Only you weren't Prudence or Penelope to me because sometimes you wore a patch over one eye to make you look more piratical. And I had to call you Captain Patch or Patch. And you called Piglet. me... Piglet! I remember. It's Piglet, isn't it? Well, Porker, actually. You used to call me Porker. Of course, Porker! I was a bit chubby, you see. Fat, actually. <laughs> but I can't, I can't believe... I can't believe... But how on earth... How on earth did you recognise me? I can't possibly look the same. Well, that's the extraordinary thing. It wasn't you I recognised. It was a sensation. When I saw you coming across your lawn, my stomach dipped. Just as it always did when I saw you coming then. In anticipation, I suppose. And a kind of... of terror of what you had in store. That's when I recognised. The dip of my stomach. Nobody else has ever made my stomach do that. And then I recognised you. The nose. The eyes, of course. Your, um... Well, beauty, actually. <laughs> if I may say. <laughs> the same beauty in a different form. Do you mind if I... if I touch you? I, I want to make sure you're not a, a ghost. No, no, your flesh and your blood, all right. Yeah. <laughs> not a trick or a joke. Well, a bit of a joke, perhaps, but not a trick, I don't think. <laughs> no, you were the one person I always trusted, weren't you? That's virtually what you've been saying, isn't it? You did these things for me. Well, I did always try. No, but when things were wrong, or, or difficult, you see, I've been, I've been, I've been praying, praying frantically, just as I used to pray when I was a child. You know the one, oh, God, please help me, please save me. Oh, if you do, I'll never not believe in you again. And now here you are, Piglet. Porker, well, I'm not sure I'm the answer to a prayer exactly, but if you need help and there's anything I can do, well, I'm yours. Up to a point, of course. Up to a point? Well, within the usual limits. What limits? What are the usual limits? Well, of me being me. That's all I mean. I'm probably not any braver, but I'm quite a bit stronger. Oh, don't worry about being brave. Leave that to me. It's your help I want. That's what I need. Oh, good Lord, Patch, of course I'll help you. How could I not? Oh, not fair. Not fair! Not bloody fair! Hello, darling. You, you looking for me, then? No, for him! Sarge! You've got to get in touch with me. You can't be leaving an urge. Darling, you're absolutely soaking. Of course I'm soaking. I've been running around on the lawn trying to thrash a wog. Then running around the countryside because he's got himself into a woggish panic. Panic? Why is he in a panic, darling? He says he's got to go back. Yes. James. Sorry. I remembered what it was in the lab. It was the cat. Forgot to disconnect the bloody cat. I'll have to go straight back or I'll have the animal rights lot ripping the place apart again. Oh, God, Boris, did you have to tell Penny you know what she's like about animals? Ah, sorry, Penny, my love. But anyway, it's not what it sounds like. 
The cat was to all intents and purposes dead when it was brought to us. A very acute brain condition. Not dissimilar to what Your wife was shown with the woods. Very syndrome. lucky to have them so close. Oh, yes, aren't we? I prepare that conversation we were having. As our time's been cut short, I'll come straight out with it. I need a bit of help in something. Oh. Yes, with your uncle, the principal at Hartford, old Potsy, as you call him. Ha! Oh, well, what can I do? This major series he's been appointed to edit with the Channel 4 link up. The World of the Ancients is going to be called Mundus Antiquorum. Point is, I need to be a part of it. At least get in on the Greek philosophers section. Oh. Well, why don't you drop him a note? He really is very amenable. Yes, well, a few years ago, I wrote an article dumping all over his book on Greek tragedy, so I've got a bit of brown nosing to do. The best thing would be to ricochet off him in a social context. Come on, James, get a move on. Other side, Boris. Oh, if you drive, we won't arrive until tomorrow. At least we'll arrive. Oh, thank you, Derek, for letting me give you a beating yet again. <laughs> I don't believe all this stuff about a cat. Thank you for a we'll lovely afternoon. Not at all. Next time you're in Oxford, drop in for a cup of tea or coffee. I'm in Hartford, New Court East Staircase. Learn how to play better with well, better. New Court East Staircase. Come on, James. What? I'll come tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> when? Very well. Don't know. <laughs> James. In London, he was known as the Wren. His real preference is for the barmaid type. Oh, by the way, he seems to have got it into his head that you're one of my lovers. Or one of my ex-lovers, possibly. He referred to you as my friend, the portly pansy. Did he? Tell me, does she know? That he thinks you're portly pansy? No. About him and his barmaids? Well, I imagine he hopes she doesn't. After all, that must be part of the fun. Deceiving mummy. The thing is, I'm right in the middle of marking some essays. I've got to give them back tomorrow morning. And I spent rather a um, uh, fruitless afternoon out visiting some of Boris's friends. Oh, ghastly, quite ghastly. And now I'm, um, I'm a bit behind, so... What? What lecture? Oh, yours, of course I remember. I thought for a minute you were telling me I was giving a lecture. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, I hadn't forgotten. How could I forget your first lecture? But, uh, just a minute, what time is it exactly? Oh, no, that's fine, that's fine. I'd had some idea it was in the morning, which I couldn't have managed. My own teaching, you know. Afterwards? Yes, yeah, certainly, I'll be there, 3.30 on the dot. Don't worry. Well, what do you say? I don't know, sir. Well, look, Edmund. I, actually, it's Edward, sir. Hmm? Not Edmund, sir. It's Edward Wilkins. Sorry. Edward. Yes. Well, have you got a reason for not writing me essays?
<clears throat> yes, well, what it comes to is this. Either you produce an essay, or at least a plausible excuse for not doing them, within the next day or so, all right? been waiting for you all morning. What are you doing here? You gave me the wrong address. There is no East Staircase in your court at Magdalen. I'm at Hartford. Your husband is at Magdalen and Boris is at Magdalen. I'm at Hartford. Oh, I suppose I just assumed. Um, well, we can't talk now. I'm supposed to be meeting somebody here. That's how I got away, you see. And all for nothing. All wasted. Oh, God! I'm supposed to be meeting somebody too, but afterwards. No, I have to go back almost immediately. Derek needs the car, you see. I can't be late. The car? But you haven't got the car. You're on a bicycle. Bicycle? I'm sorry I'm late, especially after summoning you out like this. But I desperately need need to talk. I, uh, I. Mm. I'd given them up, but this last week, I... oh, sorry, I interrupted. Oh, no, no, we just bumped into each other. But we'd met, hadn't we? You're James Westgate. You came to dinner once about a year ago. Oh. Um. After you'd given a paper for my husband's history thing. I'm Deirdre Pilkington. Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Well, I don't know what your view is. Everybody has a view, I know, including, I gather, that he was on the verge of being unmasked as an embezzler. And there are even a couple of scatty, no, not scatty, vicious girls going round claiming, although why they think that's a reason for him to run away from his home and his work. I mean, he could scarcely be better off, could he? With lots of new bio students and a completely unsuspecting wife. But the fact is, whatever your particular view, he's dead. Murdered. Oh, Deirdre, don't. Now, all they've got to do is find a shred of evidence. His body, for instance. But to do that, they'll have to start looking seriously for him, won't they? Sorry. Sorry, my dear. But 
I've just come from the police, you see. And that dreadful man on the desk, pretending to be so avuncular. But all the time I could tell what his real view was, his particular view, that I'm a sad but tiresome middle-aged woman who can't accept the obvious, that her husband has abandoned her from boredom or run up with his floozy, and it's really all my own fault for not knowing how to keep him at home. Nobody, nobody in the world except me and his children seems to understand that he was a nice man, a good man who loves us actually and would never, never just abandon us. Of course, you understand, Penny. I do know that. I, I can't tell you how sorry, how very sorry. Um, I better leave you. Oh, may I just ask, what time is Derek leaving? I mean, if I went out now, would I catch him? Excuse me. He has to go at 4.30 promptly. So if you're after 4.30, you'll miss him completely. But he probably won't be gone too long, probably not more than an hour or so. And then he'll be back. Right. Got that. Well, um, nice to have met you. in droves. And then when I started reading Baudelaire, something happened to my throat. Nerves, I suppose. I sounded just like Donald Duck. At least from the inside. I expect I did from the outside, too. Well, let's be off to somewhere I can feel invisible for a time. Yes, well, that's the awful thing. I've got to go. Oh? You see, it's my father. I've just heard he's very ill. Very ill indeed, so I've got to go to London. He's in hospital. Oh, James, I am so sorry. Here I've been whinging on about a silly lecture. Look, we'll have dinner. I'll take you to the French place. You won't be back in time. Come straight to me and I'll cook us something. Right. <laughs> It's all right. I waited around the corner. He went past me without a glance. You forgot to get the petrol. I asked you to fill her up in Oxford. I reminded you just before you left. If I hadn't noticed, I'd be stuck on the bloody bypass. Oh, darling, I am so sorry. So sorry. Out of my mind, and um, because of Deirdre being so. Bugger upset. Deirdre, you were late back here anyway. What am I going to do? I've got a seminar starting in twenty minutes' time. Postgraduate. I'll phone for a taxi. You know how I hate wasting money on taxis. Besides, they'll take half an hour to get here. Very good of you. Not at all. I was on my way back anyway. <clears throat> Where from? Hmm. 
where we were on your way back from. Oh, you're visiting my father. He's in hospital. He lives around here, does he? No, in London, as a matter of fact. Rather a long way round. Hmm? Coming from London. Yes. I like to go by the side roads. Whiff of the country. Anything serious? Hmm? Your father. Oh, it is rather, I'm afraid, yes. What's a seminar on? Plato, the symposium. Ah, the Greek ideal of love, eh? That's the ticket. I reread it often. The school chaplain introduced me to it. He was a great teacher and an exceptionally sensitive and feeling man, especially with boys of my age. Oh, yes. I mean, boys of my age, the age I was then. Sixteen. He'd have little seminars. Well, symposiums, he actually called them, with the two or three lads in whom he took a special interest. There you are, not even late. Thanks, you saved my bacon. Now, the question is, how the hell am I going to get home? Look, what are you up to this evening? Well, uh, nothing. Good, then why don't you pick me up here at 7.30? Oh, right. Come and have a bite of supper with us, or something. Thank you. setting out on one of your escapades. Yes, but this isn't an escapade, you see. It's a nightmare. And today you've been part of it. Turning up when I was meeting Deirdre, of all people. And then driving up and then driving straight off with Derek. Then Derek phoning saying you were coming back with him. And then standing in the door looking just like... like... with your glasses glinting. Just more out of the nightmare. <laughs> Here. Feel. Still flesh and blood. Just as I was yesterday. And I'm here in spite of everything. Now tell me what the matter is, Patch. Is it... Is it Derek? Something wrong between you and Derek? No, no, it isn't him. Oh, well, of course it is, in a way because he's the whole point. Whatever happens, he mustn't know, you see. Mustn't. I've already promised I won't tell a soul. It's another man, then, perhaps, is it? You might put it that way, yes. Another man. Look at his glasses. See how they glint. Yes. Who is it, exactly? Horace. Um, Horace who? Pilkington. Oh. What... What exactly happened to him, then? I killed him, you see. So there you are. It lets your little chum, Patch, has grown up into a murderess. You're not going to let me down now, are you? After all you've promised? Well, 
Um, how did it happen, precisely? I told you. I killed him. Yes, but it must have been a sort of... A sort of accident, mustn't it? I mean, you didn't just... just stick those things into him on a whim, I take it. <laughs> did you? No, no, of course not. I stuck them into him on purpose. You see... What was the purpose, He Patch? came over when Derek was in London seeing his publisher. And he was messing about in the woods, looking for his precious burial mound or whatever it was he was always looking for. And I was reading on the lawn. And he suddenly came gambling up, saying he'd found it. He was sure he'd found it at last. Come and look, please, Penny. So I went. I'd much rather not go through it all again, Piglet. I think I really need to know, Patch. All right. He was showing you the burial mound? Yes. And then he began. That's when it happened, you see. Began what? To touch me. He was everywhere. His hands, I mean, they were everywhere. Under my skirt, on my breasts. And his spectacles, his spectacles were butting against my face. And then I saw his scissors. I picked them up and I just... What did you do then, Patch? Went in and had a bath, of course. I was covered with blood. And then? I sat in the kitchen waiting for Derek, thinking about how to tell him. Tell him what I'd done to Horace. And why didn't you? Oh, I tried to once or twice, but it was impossible, quite impossible. When he came home, he was in such a state because his book had been turned down by the publishers, you see. On Socrates, man and something, myth, myth. And so, of course, that's what he wanted to talk about. And I had to keep on saying how disgusting, how disgraceful, how shameful and shocking as he went over and over what they'd said to him and he'd said to them. Then I heated up some soup. We went through it all again and then we went to bed. Yeah, that's all, really. But surely, if you told it to them the way you've just told it to me... Yes, but you see, think of the publicity. The trial. There'd certainly have to be a trial, wouldn't there? I might even go to jail, mightn't I? Oh, I don't think... I mean... After all, he assaulted you. It's not my going to jail. It's what it would do to Derek. Even if I didn't. He's only just come to Oxford. It, it would be talked about in the college, among his students, everywhere. He couldn't endure that. He'd hate me for it. Yes. I see. I take your point, but I can't help feeling that the proper course You're in the to long... You're tell them, aren't you? Derek and the police. No, no, of course not. But if you... We, we don't do the normal thing, the proper thing, the legal thing, that is. You can't leave him where he is, can you? Of course not. That's what I want you to help me with. Darling, you're back. How oh, lovely. Oh, hello there. Uh, Derek. Huh, what happened to you then? Hmm? You were going to pick me up at half past seven. Oh, Lord. Derek, I'm terribly sorry. I suppose, I suppose that with one thing and another, you completely slipped my mind. Oh. <laughs> you see, I had to chair the wine committee and it ran over a bit because of the port. I am sorry. How did you get back? By bloody taxi. I slipped your mind too, did I? What? Well, I did phone and tell you he'd be picking me up. Didn't you notice I wasn't here? <laughs> but he's only just arrived, darling. I thought you were together. Or just behind him, rather. What, what you need is a drink. I was just about to pour one for Piglet. Piglet? Um, actually, it's Porker. My, my friends call me Porker. As I was just in the middle of explaining to, um, P Patch. Prudence. Thank you. Prudence? Yes, well, I was just explaining that my real name was Prudence, though my friends call me Penny or Pen. 
In my case, we'll settle for Derek, can we? <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that. <clears throat> I'm infuriating. But, you know, there's another place around the corner from Hubbleweeks called Fabrics and Frolics, I think it is, some such name, anyway. I went there with a, a friend's wife when she was doing up their flat. And they really do have some very charming patterns. Just around the corner from Hubbleweeks, you say, oh, I, I must go and have a look. Do you remember to call the garage? The garage. Yes, the garage, to get them to bring some petrol over to save me hiking up there in the morning. Oh, darling, I'm terribly sorry. I can't think why. Probably just slipped your mind, eh? Sorry. Oh, that reminds me, somebody phoned. Uh, oh, no, who did you say she was? Uh, oh, That's right, Liz Maybrick. Who? Liz Maybrick, one of your research students from London, she said she was. Oh, oh, yes. What did she want? Only to tell you they failed her thesis and, and could you phone her back? Failed, eh? Well, I'm not surprised. Utterly chaotic little mind. I advised her not to submit. Actually, I did say you'd phone her as soon as you got back. She said you had her number. I expect I had back at college, so she'll have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, by the way, I was right about Pilkington. He's been murdered. Indeed. How do you know? College porter told me. Police found his car just up the road at Little Mitford. Some woman had been complaining all week about its having been parked outside her house in her spot, so they got around this morning to having a look at it. Ha! So much for Boris and the midlife crisis. But it's bad news for you, Penn. You can expect them around any time. How exciting. This is delicious, by the way. Thank you. I'm sorry it's only frozen. Um, why do you think they'll come here, darling? Because Pilkington was always hanging about here, of course. Little Mitford's walking distance, so they're bound to come. Trampling over the lawn, thundering through the woods and dragging through the ditches. But tell me why exactly, exactly why finding the car means he was murdered, Derek. Doesn't altogether follow, surely. I'm speaking on behalf of Boris, of course, in the midlife theory. <laughs> because the keys were in the ignition. So either somebody drove it there and left it in a panic, or Pilkington got out with every intention of coming back. So what would your Boris have to say to that little lot? Well, I suppose. I'll get it. <clears throat> Why did you leave it so close? Within walking distance, he said. Because I had to walk back. And you left the keys in the ignition. Because I hoped somebody would steal it. The question is, what are we going to do now? Yes, well, it's obvious that whatever it is, we've got to do it straight away. Tomorrow! You've got to do it tomorrow! What time does Derek go out? He doesn't. He stays at home on Thursdays. Well, can you get him out in the evenings? Or at night would be best. More conventional, too, I should think, for burying bodies on the quiet. Sorry. And for God's sake, stop him talking about it! Oh, sorry, wrong number. But the fool wouldn't believe me, seemed to think I was a pub or something. Yes, now, you were just about to give us the Boris line on Pilkington, I believe. Was I? Well, I don't know what it would be. I think even Boris would be a bit thrown by the car business. A pub, eh? That's unusual, to be mistaken for a pub. Which one did you think you were? Oh, the um, cat's whiskers, I think it was. Yes, the cat's whiskers. Oh, another thing I about don't Pilkington's car. I've ever come across a pub called a cat's whiskers before, have you? Not the cat's whiskers, no, never. Was it a man or a woman? Man? Why? What's that got to do with it? Well, I'm just sort of curious. What sort of accent? Accent? Yes, did he sound like a local chap or...? No idea. I suppose he, he sounded a bit... a bit North Country, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Now, what I'd like to ask the police... North Country? Now, that is interesting. Because of these new dialing codes, you see, they're so complicated that if someone wanted, say, a pub called a Cat's Whiskers in Leeds, he'd only have to get one digit wrong to find himself asking if you were the Cat's Whiskers here in Oxford. Though I admit that doesn't settle the question as whether you'd be likely to be the cat's whiskers anywhere. 
or indeed the cat's anything. I mean, not only have I never come across the cat's whiskers, the cat's pyjamas, for instance. I don't believe I've ever come across the cat's cradle, the cat on the mat, the cat and dog. Well, I the assure cat's... you that's what she said, the cat's pyjamas. The cat's whiskers, that is. She said. What? You said she said, but before you said... I meant he, he said. I must say. I must say, I'd really like to get back to the topic of the moment, if you don't mind, which happens to be the scissors. Scissors? Pilkington scissors. The ones he used to cut up his tape with. Now, what I'd ask the police, if I could be bothered, was whether the scissors were in the car, because if they weren't in the car... Uh, uh... Something the matter? Uh, it's just gone... Just a headache. What? Another one? Oh, I'll get you an aspirin. That makes one almost every evening for the last week or so. And if it keeps up, you'll have to see a doctor, Pen. There you are. I think, uh, I think if you don't mind, I think I'd better go upstairs and lie down. Won't do you much good if you don't turn the lights off. She's mm -hmm. taken to trying to sleep with the light on. Um, sorry to abandon you. Not at all. You get some rest. Never used to have them in London. Probably the country air. <laughs> By the way, all that stuff about the cats, what's it, and pubs, what was that all about? Sorry? Well, you gave the impression you were trying to tell me something. Or Penny something. Or something. Really? What sort of something? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. No, I assure you. I've always had a great interest in the derivation of things like pubs' names. In fact, I once wrote a little paper. Oh, I see. That's all right, then. It's just that I don't want Penny to be worried about anything, you see. What with all these headaches and bad nights she's been having, that's all. Yes, of course, I'll, I'll be very careful. Right. That's understood, then. Well, um, I'd better be off, then. Leave you to look after my wife. <coughs> Your wife, I mean. Yeah. Well, perhaps I'd better make sure she's put herself to bed. Thank you for dinner for me. Mm -hmm. I hope her head clears up. Um, yes. Oh, oh something. Oh, yes! Of course, how could I have forgotten? Old Potsy. I saw him this evening at the wine committee. Good, good. Now, the thing is, he's off to the States for a couple of months, leaves yeah. on Saturday, to recruit contributors for the series. Well, that cuts me out, doesn't it? Bugger! Bugger the Americans! Well, all isn't quite lost. He'll be in hall tomorrow night. Why don't you come to dinner? and I'll find some way of getting you two together. Well, that's very good of you. Thanks. Good. I'm at New Court. The porter will show you the way. So, see you in my rooms at 7.30. I'll be there. Look, why don't you stay the night in college? Why? Well, um, you know what it's like. One tends to drink rather a lot in Hall on these occasions, and, well, you see, a few years ago, some chap I invited Rather a tragedy. He didn't make it home, I'm afraid. In fact, he's virtually a vegetable. Really? Well, don't worry about me. I can look after myself, thanks. Oh, right. W would you mind if I reserved a guest room just in case you change your mind? If you want to, but I doubt if I'll be using it. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Mm.
be coming out around midnight. I'll phone you just before I leave. What about Derek? Don't worry, I'm working that out. But he's coming to dinner tomorrow with me. You try and persuade him to spend the night at my college. Because of drinking and driving and so forth. Have you got that? He won't. I'll try anyway. But don't worry, I'll find a way of keeping him there. Everything's going to be all right. You promise? I promise. Don't forget, I'll phone you. What are you doing? You're supposed to be in bed. I was just, just getting, getting some fresh air. Yeah. Oh, hello, Potsy Nutkin. Just wondering whether you're going to be in Hall tonight. Oh, good, because there's somebody who's frantically keen to meet you. Oh, his name is Derek Newhouse, actually. Yes, Derek Newhouse. Oh, I see. I've no idea. Room what? Good Lord, I'd have thought that's libelous. Oh, dear. Well, listen, Potsy, I promise I won't inflict him on you for more than a few minutes over the port. Would you mind? Be as rude to him as you like. You see, I did promise, and perhaps he wants to apologise, eh? Oh, come on, Potsy. Just a very little nut for Nutkin. Thanks. Hello. I wonder if I could speak to Dr. Ramsey. James Westgate, Hartford College. I'm one of her patients. Well, it's just that I want a prescription for sleeping pills. Come in. I see. Well, would she phone me as soon as she's free? Thank you. Yes? You told me to come and see you. Did I? About what? Well, um, to give you an essay or my excuse. And I've come to give you my excuse. Oh, right. Fire away. The thing is, I'm in love. Hopelessly in love. That's my excuse, uh, James. Well, don't worry about it. It happens to all of us. But it's a question so... of who. Who I'm in love with. Well, I suppose it does make a difference. But the thing is... Look... Uh, um... Ed, I have rather a busy day. Perhaps this isn't the time. For one thing, I, I'm waiting for the doctor. It's you, James. What? It's you I'm in love with. Ah. Oh. I have been ever since our first tutorial. It, it's paralysed me. That's why I haven't been able to do a shred of work. I, I'm terrified of your judgement on me. Well, that explains everything, Ed. Um... What do you mean, James? Well, excuse accepted. <laughs> Quite all right. I understand. You can go. Go. Oh, sorry. I didn't realise. Have I come at a bad time? Well... <laughs> I just wondered how he was. Who? Your father. Oh, um, much better. Much better than everyone seemed to think. Good. I was a bit worried, you see, as you were going to come straight to me from the hospital. So, of course, I assumed something rather serious must have happened. Oh, God, I'm terribly sorry. I completely forgot. You see, I suddenly remembered I had a wine committee meeting last night. I got back just in time for it. A wine committee meeting? Yes, it was interminable. A question of whether to buy some port or wait until a better year came up for auction. It got rather fractious. You know how these things go. And by the time we'd finished, it would have been too late to, um, disturb you anyway. Well, did you or didn't you? What? Buy the port. Ah, no, final vote went against. 12-10, I think it was. You mean there were 22 people on the wine committee? <laughs> there wasn't a wine committee, was there? No. In other words, you just didn't want to see me, did you? Hello. Yes, that's right, speaking. Doctor Who? No, 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 it was Dr. Ramsay I wanted to speak to. What? Oh, I see. 
I see. Yeah. Yes, of course, I'll come straight away. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. That was a doctor. I've got to dash, you see, up to London. Apparently, it's my father. <laughs> it's not my father, isn't it? No, you're quite right, it isn't. Here he is. I had an appointment with my own doctor today, as a matter of fact, to get a prescription. But, of course, I've, um, I've missed it. What was the prescription for? Sleeping pills. I've had some bad nights recently, oh, and uh, oh now we I really think the best thing is for you to see your own doctor. We've driven the poor brute completely mad. It's got a vicious bite. We'll soon have you out of it, won't we? What do you want them for? I want to get some sleep, obviously. You never have any trouble with sleep. You don't even have dreams. You boast about it. Well, I'm having trouble now. Of course, you realize what you're asking. It's quite illegal. Wait a minute. Right out. Just going to have a gargle. Raw throat. What sort of gargle do you use? This one. Excuse me. Oh, nursery. Do you mind if I use your telephone? Pour us a drink. What would you like? A uh, scotch, if you have one. Yes, I have. A malt? Perfect. Uh, 
And how is Penny? Oh, seems a bit on edge. Had another bad night, nightmares, that kind of thing. I'm sorry to hear it. Yes. Consequently, I had a pretty bad night myself. Didn't get much sleep either. Oh. Let's hope this evening's a success. I'd be very interested to hear your views on that, by the way. It's uh, Glen Muldoon. The distillers only do a thousand bottles. Three hundred come to this college. One of my little coups on the wine committee. Rather odd. Isn't it? Oh, you will find two golden masks there, presented by the people of Athens. There are English resonators near the nose, which they all round So nice talking to you. It's amazing. Even more ill-mannered in the flesh than in his pose. Yes, I'm terribly sorry, Botsy. And thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, any news from my baby brother in law? Mm -hmm. Your father, how is he? Do you know? Oh, still clinging on, as far as I know. Clinging on? Well, um, you know what he's like. <laughs> oh! Hell's the man with me. He must be last night catching up. Oh, don't worry. He thinks you're charming. He told me so himself when he left. What do you like? Brandy? Port? Malt, of course. Nothing for me, thanks. I already feel as if I'm in the middle of a hangover. Ah, then I've got just a thing. I'm sure I heard him say something about going to Cambridge next week. Really? But I thought the point of all this was his going to the States. Yes, he is. But he's terrified of flying, so he tells everyone he's going somewhere he doesn't have to fly to. But he usually ends up on the plane. Here you are. <sighs> what is it? It's called a witch's nipple in Argentina, where I'm told they drink it all the time. It became particularly popular after the Falklands War when they had a lot of hangovers to deal with. Filthy taste, but it works. You have to take it down in one gulp, virtually. Right, thanks. Well, I certainly need something to clear my head because I've got a hell of a night ahead of me. What? That guest room. I've got a use for it after all. Oh, you're going to stay the night. Terrific. No, I'm not. I'm going to London. Look, I'm going to have to trust you. There's someone turning awkward, bloody awkward, as a matter of fact, leaving messages in college, phoning me at home, making threats. Last night, for instance, just as you suspected. Anyway, if I don't get down there tonight, She'll be up here doing her worst first thing tomorrow. So, you're going to have to lie for me. I told Penny I'm spending the night here. I mean, she wants me to anyway. But needless to say, if she ever found out if she got even the slightest wish... I wouldn't dream of saying a word. Right. Thanks. If she phones at all, which, knowing her, she probably will. I'll tell her you're safely tucked up in the guest room. There's no phone there. Right. And I'll look in on my way back in the morning to see if she's left any message I should know about. And if I'm out, I'll leave it there, on the desk. Right. Well, I'd better get moving. Thank God my head's beginning to clear. Let's hope this stuff finishes the job. Oh. Thanks for your help. I appreciate it. Hello. It's, um, Porker. He's just gone. To bed, of course. I filled him full of booze and so forth, so I'm sure he'll go out like a light. We're safe until the morning. Yes, I'm on my way right now. You don't have to come. Oh, yes, I do. I've got to see him gone. See for myself. All right. Well, then.
We sally forth, eh? Why are you wearing all that? It might rain. What are those? Sheets for wrapping him in. You but won't they be identifiable if he's found? Well, there are any sheets, ordinary sheets that you could get. What's in. that? What? Oh, our initials. This must be the pair Derek's mother gave us. I'll, I'll get some others. No sheets. Well, I haven't got anything else. Nothing is better than sheets. This is far enough. Just a bit more, another few yards or so. Yes, it said on the radio it was going to. I expect it's making the ground softer. Is it? We better get on with the last bit, then we're done. It looks very fresh. It is fresh. Well, we better put something over it. At last, no more lying them out in a ditch. Thou thy worldly task hast done. Home art gone and taken thy wages. It's ta'en, not taken. Ta'en thy wages, not taken. Run it out, shower it down, run yourself another one. Here. You should have showered first. It's a rum toddy. Clothes are in the bedroom. What are you doing? Sewing a button on Derek's shirt. Hmm? It's for you. I can't give you one of his good ones. He always knows exactly about his clothes. But there are some he's thrown out for help the aged. But I took all the buttons off them. Now I'm having to put some back on. Serves me right for being so mean. <laughs> you can put on the rest of them. 
that. I've put your belt through the trousers. They're a bit ragged, but they'll get you home. And there are your dirty ones. Go on, get dressed. Come up me a minute. I've given you his flip-flops. He won't miss those. I think they're Turkish. There we are. That's all right. Well, they'll do to get you back. Can I really walk across Newcourt like this? Of course you can. You look perfectly... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's just I can scarcely believe... I, I still really haven't taken... My head feels so... <sighs> I mean, he's actually gone. For good. I gone. Gone. We did it, didn't we? Huh? Yes, we did. Just like the old... old days. You lead, I follow. But not to any corpses next time, please, Patch. Hawker, I think you're wonderful. Do you? <laughs> yes, I do! Quite wonderful! And adorable with it. Patch. My patch. Do you know? Do you know what you mean to me? Have always meant to me. I think, ever since that summer, all these years, I've been locked in some little cell, hunched in some little cell. I must have been waiting for you to come back and let me out. I love you. Love you. What are you doing? I'm not going to let you go again, ever. You're mine. You can't. <laughs> you can't. Why not? Well, for one thing, you're homosexual. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. But you are. Derek told me. He said you were Boris's boyfriend, sort of, as far as you could make out. Anyway, he said you admitted it yourself. He said you were quite open about it. I only let Derek believe it. For your sake. For my sake? So he wouldn't mind my... our seeing each other. You can't ever have thought. No, you didn't. Not in your heart, you didn't. But I haven't thought about you in my heart. I never think about anyone in my heart except Derek. I thought you understood that, Piglet. Porker. It's Porker. There was someone called Piglet, wasn't there? Someone else. It's not just the names you keep confusing. Well, there might have been. I think there was another boy, the summer before or after. He wasn't anything as nice as you, though. I remember you far better. But now, I really think you better go, you know. It's getting late. Early, I mean. Oh, we've got to get some rest, and Derek might come back earlier. No. I'm not going. I can't. You don't love him. I've seen the way he talks to you. I've seen the way he looks at you or doesn't look at you. You say yourself you're frightened of him. What has he done to deserve you? Oh, Porker, you don't know anything about it. He loves me. We have a happy, happy marriage. A happy marriage? <laughs> oh, Patch. You know what sort of man he is. Yes, I do. And I don't want you to say another, not another. Do you know where he is now? He's not asleep in my college. He's gone down to London to see one of his barmaids. That girl who called last night, Liz. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Why, even Boris knows all about him. In London, he was known as the Ram. I know it isn't in the rules to tell on husbands, but I'm not playing by the rules. I'd do anything for you, Patch. Anything but let you go. I wasn't just sent to you to help you. You were sent to me because I need you. So I'm 
and start my life at last. I've always needed you. You're worse than Pilkington. You should have buried yourself with him. He just put his hands on me, but you lie and lie and lie about everything! I hate you! Pilkington, I suddenly realised he had gashes all over him. Not just in his neck. So she slaughtered him just as she tried to slaughter me. Yes, well, she's quite evidently gone mad. Far madder than you've gone, even. Look, what exactly are we going to do? First, obviously, calm her down. Then form a shrink of my acquaintance, give him a highly edited version of the facts, and get her hospitalised immediately. And we have to work out how to save you from jail and Penny from a lifetime in an institute for the criminally insane. Also, how much we tell Derek. If he survived the night, that is. What's that? A sedative. What's that? Chloroform. But if you've got a sedative... Yes, but I may have to subdue her first, especially if she comes at me with her scissors. You will be careful, won't you? My dear James, I have to deal with frenzied monkeys all the time. No, I meant be careful with her. <laughs> Good God, James. I wish you weren't enjoying it all so much. Is the door open? Yes. Was it a minute ago? I don't know. I think so, yes. Good. Then I might take her unawares. No, you stay here. I'm coming with you. No, James, you're not. It's you she wants to kill, don't forget. I'll call you when I'm ready. She was waiting for me behind the door. Must have been the car. Thought I was you. <laughs> Help me, please, eh? Help me.
Oh, hello, Piglet. I knew you were all right, really. I knew I could never hurt you, could I? No, but you couldn't. I was just going to go downstairs to make sure. And then here you are. So I don't have to now, do I? No, but you don't. tired. Had such a strange time recently. Shall I go to bed now? Yes, I think you should. Would you help me, please? Such a long night it's been, you see. <laughs> Up to all kinds of things, haven't we? Yes, we have. Here, stand up, Patch. And let's get you tucked up, shall we? Lift up, Patch, there's a good girl. Keeps it neatly, so it doesn't crease. Brush my teeth. Do you think it matters? No. Not this one's patch, it doesn't. No. One just won't hurt. I don't want to go through any of that again, Piglet. Not ever. I'm too old now. Yes. So am I. You won't let it happen again, then? No. Do you promise? I promise, Patch. Yes. 
sorry. Good night, Walker. Good night, Patch. Larry! Oh! I just looked in to see if she phoned. Nothing on the desk. No. Uh, then I made the mistake of um, sitting down for a minute. Had a sort of um, blackout on the motorway. Felt myself going, pulled into a lay-by. Out for hours. Oh. By the time I got to her place, she'd left. Just to hope to God she hasn't come up here to make trouble on my doorstep. Well, at least no messages, eh? No, no messages. Oh, well, I'd better get home and uh, see what's what. Something. Oh, yes, look, most of last night's pretty dim, but how did it go with your Uncle Bots here? Very well, I'm sure. Potsy. Potsy? Yes, well, I suppose that's something. <laughs> oh, and look. Um, well, 
thanks for everything. Thank you.